As we work with data, often one of the challenges we run into is how to present the data in a meaningful way that we can draw some conclusions from. One such way is by making what's called a frequency table. To set up our discussion about what frequency tables are, let's take a look at some vocabulary that will be helpful as we do this. With the frequency table, we're really interested in this thing called the frequency, or how often each value, or sometimes a range of values, occur. Sometimes, rather than the frequency, though, or how often they occur, we're interested in the relative frequency. The relative frequency, instead of looking how often each value occurs as a count, we're interested in the proportion of values in a range. And the way we calculate this is we take the number of times it occurs and we divide by the number of numbers. Number of times it occurs divided by the total sample size. And that's going to give us a decimal. That's the proportion of times that that number occurred in the data set. After the relative frequency, another thing we're often interested in is what is called the cumulative relative frequency. The cumulative relative frequency, cumulative means how many have we seen up to this point. In other words, it is the sum of all the previous relative frequencies. Now, as we set up a frequency table showing the frequencies of each range of values, we're going to break the frequency table up into what we call classes. A class is a row in the frequency table. So the first class would be the first row of the frequency table. Another important value is what we're going to call the midpoint. A midpoint is the middle of a class. And often we use it to kind of be the representative point of the class, which is found by averaging consecutive lower limits. In other words, we'll take lower limit 1 plus the next lower limit 2 and divide by 2 because there's two points. So if that's the vocabulary that we're going to be using. We're going to be finding the frequency, relative frequency, cumulative relative frequency, and midpoints for these frequency tables. The big thing we need to know with the frequency table has to do with the class. How do we make the classes? How to make classes. As we set up our frequency table, there's really two rules to set up the classes. And these are not hard and fast rules, but more like general guidelines. As a general guideline, we're going to make the first class start half a unit, 0 0.5, less than the smallest value. Then what we do to get the end of that first class, we're going to add the width, which is found by this formula, where we take the maximum value of the data set, subtract the minimum value of the data set, 
and we divide by the number of classes that we want to have. Now this will usually give us a decimal. Sometimes it will give us a whole number. But either case, after we do that division, we will always round up, even if it's a whole number. So if you get 5.2, we round up to 6. If you get 5 exactly, we still round up to 6. Even if it's a whole number, we're going to add, we're going to round up to that next whole number. OK, I think it's time we build one of these frequency tables so that we get an idea of what they look like and how they're built. Example. Some data is collected. on the number of hours students spend on homework. We are going to organize it in a frequency table. with four classes. So here's the data. Two, two, three, four, six, six, seven, 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 eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, 10, 10, 10, 11, 12, 12, 13, and 15. We need to first know where we're going to start the frequency table. And then we're going to figure out the width of each class in the frequency table, and then fill in the pieces from there. We always start half a unit before the first data point putting them in order. These are already in order, which is nice. So we're going to start half a unit before 2 at 1.5. For the width, we take the biggest number of 15, subtract the smallest number of 2, and divide by the number of classes we want, which is 4. So 15 minus 2, if I put that in parentheses, divide by 4 is 3.25. But we said this class width always needs to round up, so the width is going to be 4. So let's start making our frequency table. We'll have the low end of our range, the high end of our range. After we have the low and high range, we should be able to find the midpoints. Then we can look at actually finding the frequencies, the relative frequencies, and the cumulative relative frequency, CRF, for each of these. So we said the data was going to start at 1.5. And because the width is 4, we add 4 to that to get 5.5, which also becomes the low end for the next class. Add 4 to that to get 9.5, which is also the low end for the next class. Add 4 to that to get 13.5. 13.5 is the bottom of the next class. And add 4 to that to get 17.5 for the high end of my last class. Now for the midpoints. For the midpoints, we said we just have to average consecutive lower limits. So we've got these two lower limits of 1.5 and 5.5. So I'll do 1.5 plus 5.5. Divide that by 2. That's going to be 7 divided by 2, which is 3.5 for the first midpoint. Notice that's halfway in between uh, my limits. Perfect. I can do this process over and over again for each class. But another nice thing is the width of the classes is also the width for the midpoint. So if I just keep adding 4, we get 7.5 plus 4 is 11.5 plus 4 is 15.5. And now we've got our midpoints all the way down. To fill in the frequencies, I just have to look at how many numbers fall within each range between 1.5 and 5.5. I count four, four values. 
between 5.5 and 9.5, there's nine values there. Between 9.5 and 13.5, there's eight values there. And between 13.5 and 17.5, there is one value there. If we were to add those up, we find out there are 22 values total, which is good to double check. My data does have 22 values in it, so I didn't miss any values. But then to find my relative frequencies, my relative frequencies takes that frequency of 4 and divides by the total number of values, which is 22, to get my relative frequency value of 0.1818. And we go all the way down doing the same thing. There were 9 in the second class out of 22 gives me a relative frequency of 0 0.4091. The next class had 8 of the 22 values. That's going to give me a relative frequency of 0.3636. And the last one has 1 out of the 22 values. That's going to give me a relative frequency of 0 0.0455. Finally, we just have the cumulative relative frequency left to fill in. The cumulative relative frequency is going to add those relative frequencies on the way down. So the first relative frequency is the only one we have, so it's 0.1818. And then to get the next one, we add the next relative frequency. 0.1818 plus 0.4091 is 0.5909. And then we keep going down the chart. Add the next one to get 0.9545. And we add the next one, and that should give us 1.0000. The last cumulative relative frequency should always be 1.0 because we've added up all of the frequencies out of the total. This table allows us to get a quick view then of how the data looks summarized in a nice, useful frequency distribution.